Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome back to another Adobe Live. I'm your host, Fabiola Lera. Today on the stream, we're joined by the talented graphic designer, Casey Moses. We're so excited to have you here today, Casey. How are you feeling today? What's the vibe? I'm excited and nervous, but mostly excited. <laughs> normal. These are normal feelings. Don't worry. Everyone in the chat is going to give you a warm welcome. I am here to host, and you're going to be showing us your work. So, don't worry, this is going to be amazing. So today, Casey's going to be showing us how she designs a romance book cover from sketch to final. So I'm very excited to get a sneak peek into her workflow. But before we get started, if you missed the show before ours, be sure to watch the replays. Plus, check out the Creative Cloud Express streams on Monday and Tuesday mornings. This week, Andrew Hockerdell will show you how to get started in the easy to use app and create content for Teacher Appreciation Week. So make sure to check that out and start your day with the creative encores of the Photoshop Creative Challenges hosted by Sam Peterson every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific. Tune in, challenge yourself with a new creative prompt each day. Now, if you're tuning in from YouTube, please do me a favor and jump over to Behance. This way you get the most interactive experience here with Casey and I. So head over to behance.net slash Adobe Live, join the chat, talk to us, we'll talk to you. It'll be an amazing time. And remember, you can watch the live streams even when we're offline. So go ahead and bookmark this page so you can come back to it whenever you need a little refresh. Now, let me see who is hanging out in the chat, Casey. Let's see who we got here. I'm sure we have a ton of folks antsy for this. Hey, Sean. Hey, Richard. Of course, Wade. Hi, hi. Um, thank you so much for being here, everyone. RB, so excited to have you. All right, Casey, why don't you kick this off by introducing yourself and telling us what exactly we're up to today? So my name is Casey, and my day job is I'm a book cover designer. I mostly work on... Um, young adult books at uh, Random House Children's Books. So I do front covers, full jacket designs. Um, I work with a lot of illustrators, photographers. I do a lot of hand lettering, which we're going to get into today um, and some illustration, but um, yeah, that's me. I'm currently in Pittsburgh. I love it. I'm so excited to be streaming with you today. You've made some amazing book covers. I see we have some here from your website. Can you walk us through maybe some recent ones or your favorite ones or whatever you want to select. Honestly, it's, it's your portfolio. It's already the best of the best, but. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. So I, as you can see here, I work on quite a range of genres, um, lots of thrillers, romance, um, some fantasy here and there, but, um, I have on my Behance profile. I have a couple. Um, one that's really popular is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I have the, it's a series. There's three books. Um, and we got to do these really cool photo shoots for like full wrap jackets. Um, so something like that is fun. I've done hand lettering for these in a more thriller vibe. Um, some other things I've done, Kisses and Croissants is a cute romance that I hand lettered the title for and we hired an illustrator to do this adorable art. Um, and then another one that's really cool, I recently did a box set that's, um, it's filled with a bunch of books that are super popular on TikTok right now. Um, so that was a kind of a fun challenge to do some lettering and illustration for a full, um, die line and, um, it's very personal. I'm very active on um, book talk. So this was a super fun yes, project. To work I was going to say, what a perfect fit for you. <laughs> I was checking out your TikTok. If you don't already follow Casey on TikTok and you love books, it's like you should be following her because she's going to be sharing the best of the best. But I saw, I can't believe you, you'd worked on that project. I'm like, wow, that's so perfect for you. Um, and it came out beautifully. It's, it's lovely. 
Yeah, it's a real thing. It was one of those like crash projects to make happen, but um, it's a real thing that exists out in the world. You can buy it now. <laughs> Perfect. I love that. Okay, so tell us a little bit about what we're getting into today. So I am going to walk through... Um, I, so I thought it'd be really fun to do a romance cover, but I'm doing like a book trope um, as the title. So I just pulled up quickly some adult romance um, covers here. We can just look at really quick inspiration. We have a lot of illustrated covers are super popular right now. And like a hand lettered title um, showing the couple or the characters on the cover. Um, so we're going to do something like this today and I'll switch over to my iPad to get started um perfect yeah I love this I now that you like pointed out I'm like oh yeah so many of these have that illustrated character plus hand lettered title trend and I'm just like I didn't even notice because I'm not I'm never looking at books all at once you know perfectly curated but now that you pointed out I'm like oh dang how cool how interesting and I'm excited to see how we kind of work with that today yeah, I, I definitely spend a lot of time looking at the market and what's happening. And yes. um, a lot of those adult covers like that, um, it bleeds into the young adult category too, because we have a lot of people that read um, like across age groups. Um, so that's what we're doing today, a romance cover. And the trope that I picked to do is grumpy sunshine because it's one of my favorites. So when someone in the relationship is a little bit grumpy and the other one is kind of their polar opposite um it's one of those opposites attract uh kind of things i thought would be fun um so i always start i'm just gonna start with um i have like an eight and a half by 11 okay. canvas here and we're um, using adobe fresco right just for anyone in the chat who's correct. not <laughs> not familiar with the interfaces here this is adobe fresco you're working you said an eight and a half by 11 yeah, so what I like to do is, um, so like a standard hardcover book um, is usually uh, like five and a half ish by eight and a quarter. Um, so I made a template that I just like to drop in here. And I have a template that has both the front cover and the spine, which is super important when we're lettering. Um, you can go wild on the front cover um, with all of your you know, fun swashes and stuff, but then you always have to remember that the spine, sometimes you only have half an inch, an inch of space, depending on how long the book is. Um, and sometimes that changes late in the game. So I like to keep, um, I like to have a, a reference for both here because we'll have to adjust the title lettering to fit on the spine of the book. Right. And that's like, yeah, you can get crazy and creative with the front cover. And then on the spine, you have to rein it in and really, I guess, go for legibility. Yeah. And like, you can't have any of those like wild swashes. I'm, I mean, you can, but they might bleed off, um, get like cropped on the spine. So I always like try to take care to um, like readjust certain letters for the spine to um, make it work. And then we also have to put usually like an author name has to fit at the top, like an imprint logo. So spacing too, especially if it's like a really long title, if you do a lot of adjusting to fit there. Um, but luckily today we're like only using puzzle. two words. So um, we have grumpy sunshine, so that should be fine. I always like to fill my background with a color <laughs> first because um, something about just a white, canvas feels so blank and at least like I feel like I've done something um oh and it you're feels totally a right more... you're totally right it's like okay there's a color and now I'm, I'm laying something else on top of it as opposed to being like the first precious stroke that you're gonna yeah, lay exactly. on this white cover okay that's a really good psychological tip here you know yeah. tip number one out of the stream consider um, just layering some color and getting started yeah. Uh, white is so boring. I like to, and I like usually I throw pink on everything. Pink's one of my favorite colors. So um, I'm going to start with just a uh, pencil brush to do some sketching. So um, I have, um, I guess I should change the color to a color that we can see. <laughs> That'll show up. <laughs> um, okay. So we're going to do I have the title is going to be, so we're going to literally do um, 
grumpy sunshine. So I like to write it out because especially if you're lettering or working on book cover, sometimes words don't look real anymore. Um, <laughs> so it's nice to have like a reference to make sure you're spelling things correctly. Yeah. When um, you get so in the weeds of the design, you're like, you lose sense of, uh, grammar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I, I definitely stared at things so long and I'm like, Am I spelling the word the correctly? Like right. <laughs> everything just I think looks... is usually gets me. I'm like, yeah, yes, that looks so weird. Um, so I'm just like really quick going to um like try some different um uh so like these are like layouts. little sketches, little yeah. thumbnails of the bigger one. Okay. So we can do, I can put like a blurb at the top and then we'll have like kind of like the author name. I'm just going to use, use bookish tropes as like, cause it's two, two words. Um, so we'll like kind of put that at the bottom okay. and I'm going to put two characters. Um, so this is like kind of first thing. It's all very like, this is like where people tend to go and it's very like horizontal and vertical. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we can try something more like maybe on an arc a little more dynamic yes yeah and maybe like we start to do like kind of scripty um but so the thing is with like grumpy sunshine they they're never together like at the beginning like it's like they kind of don't get along um so i don't really think i want to show the characters together so maybe something like if we do like on an angle we can have like one character by one word and the other character by another yes so maybe and have do... the words dividing them yeah and then we can we can do like a cool big s oh yeah so i'm thinking like something like that and even like a little uh, we can do two burps to like fill space i'm always like i like negative space is my enemy and i'll go so hard <laughs> like doing extra stuff and then I always need to be pulled back which I think is better than um uh like Not doing too little stuff yeah yeah it's always easier to like take things away it's so hard to keep adding yes. stuff um so that's usually my mo I, I I go but it is hard to be like your own editor too so like while you're while you're drawing it's hard to also edit yeah while you're designing. exactly sometimes and I usually have break. um uh, I do, like my day job, but there are lots of people with opinions to tell me <laughs> to take stuff away or do, do something different. Um, so I always have those people um, when I'm doing book covers, like there's no shortage of um, other people's opinions on the cover because, <laughs> you know, we, it's like so many, the author, the editor, the sales There's a people, lot of everyone. stakeholders, yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm thinking we're going to do something more interesting, like, um, um, on the slant. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to get a bigger, make this a little bit bigger. So I'm planning on doing a blurb at the top. For those then, who don't know, like I'm not super familiar with book design specifically. So what would a blurb usually entail? So that's the thing when um like an author writes a book and then they they get other author friends to read it like, and this it's book like is amazing exactly so you put somebody cool. else's kind of like their their glowing review on the cover um and it's like people who read that book should also pick up this book kind of it's it, always like it. a different right. romance author I've um, definitely seen that I just wanted to make sure we were talking about the <laughs> same thing you know <laughs> get yeah. our terminology correct. Just a quick reminder for those in the chat, if you have questions for Casey, go ahead and drop them in the chat. As we work here, I'll be sure to bring them up to her. And yeah, so don't, don't feel like you can't drop your questions. We are here to answer them and show you this workflow. So keep them coming, guys. <laughs> Yeah, so I just turned on the grid so I can make sure like we're keeping things. Um, I'm actually we're gonna we're gonna start over. Um, so we can keep things straight. So a blurb will fit in here. I'm doing that trick where you hold the the line down and it straightens out in fresco, which is nice. So handy. It's like yeah. the best thing ever. When I I try to use it on a normal paper sometimes, because <laughs> I get so used to it. Yeah, no, it's um, 
I find myself like t- two finger tapping to undo things <laughs> when I'm like analog drawing stuff. Yes. Um, so I'm kind of reserving space at the top and bottom for a blurb and maybe like our um, like our bookish tropes kind of author name space. And then I also pulled up the roller, which is my favorite <laughs> tool. Um, it's so good in this app. Like I I use it every time. It's so it's so handy. Can you um, can you remind us where the ruler tool is in case anyone missed that? Because I feel like when I first discovered this, it was major. Yeah, it's like what's down there in the right hand corner. It's the ruler. Um, the best. So. If you haven't used it yet, if you haven't used the ruler in Adobe Fresco, definitely check it out. As you can see, it's it's Casey's favorite tool, so it has to be good. Yes. So I'm just going to put in, and then like if you you just draw right next to it, and it gives you um, a nice clean guideline. So I'm thinking we'll put grumpy there and then we'll want a little bit of space between that and sunshine and then the thing with um so I think I'm going to do like kind of a scripty um lettering and I'm going to give myself like an x height too um for sunshine so so these are going to be guides for the actual lettering yeah so I'm going to and then I'm just going to like roughly get this in well let's put i'm thinking we'll do like one character here okay holding the space for the characters so you don't yeah draw right over them yes letter so, right over them that's mostly what i do the 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 composing of the the layout because a lot of times i'm i do a lot of lettering for book covers um but i'm not necessarily the best illustrator so i work with a lot of other artists so it's a lot of telling them what to do and then i'm taking their work and you know making the title fit with it, it. Um, yes. yeah so um we got this Beautif- then- oh wow this is beautiful <laughs> this rough comp- composition here i love it i'm excited to see you work within these guides i feel like you know whenever i lay down guides i'm intimidated by it at the same time because i'm like oh i'm about to do this thing and i love seeing how other people just kind of knock it out and 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 i bet it's gonna be pretty natural to you based on the work that i've seen i've seen you do it won't yeah, be much um, of a struggle here. I've had lots of practice. Exactly. Um, so I'm just going to start. So I'm thinking for grumpy, um, like to kind of fit the tone of the word, we're going to do something like bolder, maybe with like some sharper edges and like all all caps kind of like louder um, is what I'm thinking. So we can do, um, I'm just going to try to stay in these. I always like to do like a cool, swash on an r that okay. like descends so that's what i'm thinking there but i'm just kind of really quickly getting in this word and then i'll go back over it yeah this is like v1 of you writing out this word lettering this word yeah and where i love watching this come together a little bit over so i have space for my <laughs> for my y. letter y And I always, you know, I always go between, I'm like, do I want to do that one? I still, I like, um, the, the Y that has like the rounded. Yeah. We all have our preferences. I think I like a curvy Y as well. Yeah. Like we'll give it like a little, you know, it's grumpy, but eventually they they come around, right? It's a (laughs) rom-com book. So, okay. So then let's work on sunshine and I'm thinking like we can do I I love a like a really like big s when it's the first letter um so and we can do something to like fill more of this space and drop down beautiful I already like that one I mean I feel like the s is just begging to get some <laughs> some flourishes in it to make it more decorative it's just a, a really good letter to add those those uh, elements in. Yeah, um, it's like yeah, it's so pretty with all the curves. Like it's an easy letter. I feel like too um, when it's kicking things off. When it's at the beginning of a letter, it's like tempting. So you may as well cave. Yeah, 
And then like, I like something that kind of like drops down and connects and like, you know, it's easy to do like a, an N into a cursive S, but I like connecting, like I like a printed S. So mm. we're going to try something like that. And then an H can go nicely up into this space up here. Yeah. I love, I love seeing how you're thinking through these things and that you added that X height to kind of guide you too. Yeah, because um, we want to make sure everything stays consistent. But I also do like dropping below and above just because, you know, if we're go if we're doing hand lettering, you know, it's not a font like we can customize it the way that yeah. we want, which is one of those things that makes so ooh, some book covers feel more special. And then I love like a dramatic, a dramatic E. And I'm staring at it like, did I spell everything correctly? <laughs> it looks spelled just fine. It's just a matter of uh, artistic license, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm a little bit, it's a little bit too big right now. So mm. I'm going to select these three layers and I'm just going to resize. I did go off of my composition a little bit. So mm -hmm. with the guide, so I would have room to do this because I knew, I, I knew this would happen. So <laughs> Casey, can I ask you what that extra uh, frame around the book is? Is that just for the bleed? Yeah. So the bleed and then on the on the right hand side of the front cover, you need um, some extra space or like extra extra bleed of art for the, the turnaround where the jacket folds over the edge of the like the hardcover book underneath. Right there, so, guys. It's all in that big brain of hers. And it's all those things <laughs> that, you know, I've learned from trial and error to, exactly. you know, use a template and fill the bleed because I have, you know, something's due to the printer and there's no, there's no extra art in the turnaround and you have to do like a Photoshop miracle to um, make it work. So um, I've been there. I've learned, I've learned lessons along the way. Um I love that because to you, it's like second nature. That's why I asked him, like, it has to be bleed related. And I'm like, you, you exactly. That's why for that turnaround. And it's cool because now you work knowing that you need to account for that. Yes. And it makes my life easier to get that from the jump. I also, so I'm zooming in here. Um, the dot above the eye, I always like to do like a heart or something, mm -hmm. but since we have the word sunshine, like it could be cute to do like maybe something that feels like a little like ray of sunshine. Yeah. Like a cute little, we can do a cute little detail like that and that would be fun. I like that. It looks, it looks friendly and warm. Yay. Okay. So I kind of have, I'll, I go over things and I'm, we're going to do, I'm going to do kind of like a, a mono thickness on the word grumpy, but sunshine will probably do some like thicker and thinner parts mm -hmm. of it. Um, so now I kind of, I make new layers and I grab, let's see. Yeah. I'm talk like to me about brushes that you like to use. I mean, this again, this is just for sketch. This is just a sketch purpose, right? Um, yes. Well, so now I'm going to go over it in a more like finalized way. So mm -hmm. I'm going to grab this like hard round brush and I, I like to do the round edges and then like I'll erase away. Like I'm a overdo it. And then like I'll erase or mask things away, um, to get like harder edges. I find that that's just easier than trying to yeah. actually draw, um, harder edges. I'm going to drop well, the, opacity. I have a question here from Mervin. Mervyn dropped quite a few questions. Mervyn, we'll get to them. I'm going to hit hit her with the first one that I think makes sense right now. So Casey, normally how many options of book covers do you present to, to the, would it be the client? I mean, you're the client in, in some ways. So how many book covers do you present to the project, whoever that stakeholder is? So um, I feel like a uh, rule of three is good, but um, if I have more ideas, I always like to explore them um, just because more options, you know, if people really gravitate towards something, I want to make sure I get all the, the good ideas I have out there. So I usually do like three to five um, to start and I'll try to make them like very different and then maybe mm -hmm. do some like variations of like my favorites. 
Um, so yeah. And like when you uh, work, so I work in house at, um, a, a large publisher and there's meetings with a lot of people. So we'll have like, sometimes up to like 20 people weigh in like early on on like concepting or sketch stages. Um, and right. same thing with artists, I'll pull like three to five artists to consider for a project. So, um, I'm always pitching a lot so that, you know, hopefully there's something that we can move forward on. And, um, it's not just going back to the drawing board and kind of starting right. you rather over. have more than than too too few ideas yeah um, are you usually presenting um at that phase like sketches or the actual final book cover options do you have multiple fine in like a final stage so I will do sketch, I'll sketch things on my end, but um, sometimes it's hard for people to make a leap to somebody else's like final art. So I'll do yeah. like, st- I'll do stick figures, like what, literally what you're seeing here. Um, I mean, I, I hire somebody else to do better sketches that right. you, sometimes that just like me and maybe the editor and the author will see, and then we'll, we'll kind of move forward on one. And then like, after we present a concept, we don't like to take anything in between between back we like to take something finished yes. back um so yeah that's usually because it depends who you're like selling the idea to right like yeah if they you know I feel like art directors are really really good at seeing a, a very very basic sketch stick figure level sketch yeah. and understand <laughs> what that final is gonna look like but maybe someone else who doesn't often have to do that can't see it until they have the final thing right in front of them yeah, and it usually it boils down to like what the creatives in publishing. So like editors usually can grasp um, yeah. like a sketch, um, like they have that creative mindset. But when it comes to the writing already, so I think they can make a leap from like a draft because they do it with the book itself. Exactly. Um, but it's like when you get to more of like the numbers people, like the sales people, um, that's where you it's um, a little bit harder for them to make that leap because it's it's just like not the language they speak. Yeah, so that's when you may may need to present something more fleshed out. Yeah. Interesting. So interesting to get your point of view on these things. Great question, Mervin. Thanks for submitting that. And remember, you guys, you can keep dropping your questions for Casey in the chat. If you're confused and you're like, I've been dropping questions and they're not seeing them, maybe you should come over to Behance, behance behance.net slash Adobe Live. In that chat, we are taking your questions, reading them off, getting back to you. So come join us on Adobe Live, join the on over on Behance, and you know, we can have we can make this a two-way conversation here while Casey works her magic designing this book cover that's already coming to life right before our eyes, guys. So go ahead, drop your questions. Now back to Casey. You are working on this M. (laughs) <laughs> yes so um m's i feel like are always m's and w's always get me um so i'm trying to actually that doesn't really matter i'm trying to go above and below these guidelines here because yeah. i'm going to come in and erase away parts Got so it. i'm not super worried about um the edges of these letters but yeah and i'm mm-hmm. following i have this grid and i'm using the um if you pull down to like straighten out the lines and i'm trying to stay straight up and down because that's easier yeah. to read when there's type that's on a slant like th- this to at least keep um the, the vertical lines, lines. yeah yeah so makes sense I, makes sense so yeah I know you've been designing and you've been um working in this field for a long time I was you know looking over at your LinkedIn and all that kind of stuff so how did you get started in book cover design and what led you down this path So I played a sport in college and also studied graphic design and we were just traveling all the time. And I also did like a fine art minor. So it was um, a bit hard to do like watercolor homework on the road when all my, all my teammates were, um, you know, reading or writing papers. So I just read, I read so much all the time and, um, 
so like I had my epiphany moment like senior year where well I got to do an independent study and I just like had this moment I was like oh like someone designs these book covers that I'm, I'm bringing everywhere and I'm reading all the time um so I started looking into like most publishers are in New York City um there was I graduated in 2015 so there was not like social media was a thing but you couldn't find as much information I feel like as you can now so it was just like there was nothing it was just like publishing's in New York and they have designer positions and that was kind of like all I could find so I did see there was um like there's the Columbia publishing course which is like kind of like a rundown on publishing like a six-week program a lot of networking nothing design specific but I was like that I had in my mind I had missed like the deadline for it so I did like an, an independent study just doing a bunch of book covers to like fill mm -hmm. my portfolio, you know, like with the work I just wanted like this, yeah. to do. <laughs> so um, then after I graduated college, I like went home for a year and did like my gap year of saving up money. Cause I was like, I'm going to New York. Like I'm going to apply to this program at Columbia um, because I was applying to jobs. Like I was applying to a yeah. bunch of assistant jobs and just hearing nothing back. And I uh, and, like even internships too, like it's publishing is so very hard to break into. So I ended up applying to the Columbia publishing course and um, getting in. I always tell people though, like you don't, have to do it if you to like get into publishing like it's not necessary um <laughs> it was just you know it, in 2016 it was like what was available to me um mm -hmm. so i ended up doing that and then i was in new york and i guess like it was probably having the new york address that got me interviews so like while i was there i was able to interview for um design assistant jobs which is just um that's the entry level mm -hmm. kind of to like the the design part of the industry um so i ended up landing my first job assisting the executive art director of random house children's books which is really cool because um she she's awesome martha rago she oversees all of children's books so it's everything from like picture books like middle grade up to YA so I got like a good view of everything so that was a really great place to start and I was able to eventually um just like move on to the YA design team um so cool you you did eventually break in as you were yeah like, <laughs> Um, it was really hard and I always tell people like just stick with it like mm -hmm. it's for it's funny because like books are so wide reaching that you would think like the publishing industry is massive but like it's really not there's really only a, like a handful of people who do yeah. like the job that I do um, yeah. like my my team has there's like five of us and we design like over 100 book covers a year um, so it's like much smaller than you think. And, you know, I try to put a lot out there about like what I do and how I got into it because like there was no one doing it when I was trying to get into it. Um, and I don't want people to, you know, like feel like they have to spend, you know, a ton of money to go to um, these like publishing programs when um, they can, you know, start a bookstagram account and talk about books there. And like, that's something cool to put on their resume. Um, totally. Or like designers and illustrators that like want to work on books, um, like fill your portfolio with uh, practice book covers, like just redesign your favorites or make them up. Um, so those are like always my tips. Yeah, like, I, feel like, into I feel it. like, you know, academia, <laughs> academia helps, but also initiative um, can yeah. take you pretty far too. I feel like for most industries yeah maybe not like um being a doctor <laughs> yeah no <laughs> like and i always there, tell people you, like you definitely need to go to school but yeah yeah and like that's a funny thing too i feel like recently i've seen a lot of design positions drop like the education requirement off interesting of, um yes. off of the job descriptions which i think is really cool because i don't think you need um like a four-year really expensive art degree um like you can kind of like i google things every day like how to do something don't so yes 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 it's like the schooling <laughs> is like basic knowledge but as the world evolves you always need to be sharpening your skills just like anyone tuning in here right now sharpening up their skills here with adobe fresco seeing how someone else kind of problem solves things. It's like, we always have to be learning, especially as creatives. Yeah, there's always like new skills to pick up. Like I love like checking, like I love watching tutorials and um, 
you know, like watching like other people use apps because like they do it differently than Everyone me. Everyone does and, it a little different. And like, they know these tools that I don't know. I feel like that's where I was like, wait, there's a ruler in Adobe Fresco. Like I saw someone else. I saw using it right it. here. Someone else blew my mind. I remember the first time I saw the ruler. Um, we have a question here from, I think it's Van Dross. So for someone new to Adobe products, what main part of your workflow do you use Fresco for when designing? So when do you usually use Fresco in your book design workflow? And we're seeing it here at the beginning, but I'm just curious if there's other parts. Yeah, so definitely th this part of it, um, the just like getting out ideas and sketching and um, like trying different like letter forms and stuff, seeing what's where it's like where I do a lot of my brainstorming um, because and like you can just keep doing like more layers and like I I feel much more comfortable with the iPad with like the Apple pencil in my hand than just sitting in front of the computer like in front of InDesign and Photoshop like okay go like it's I feel like it's easier um, to like do, easier, do like, something with my hands <laughs> yeah yes. so there that's you, usually where um this is like my starting point here there you have it guys i know there's a couple questions about indesign and and all that kind of stuff so this is where she kicks off her design process gets the creative juices flowing gets her composition down and later in the stream we'll see where she takes it to other programs to kind of um refine or just finish up designs but this is where she starts so there you have it guys um, I think Fresco is super intuitive, so it makes sense that it's kind of the most like taking uh, pencil to paper and just kind of playing around. So I think it gives, from what I can tell, like a lot of more creative freedom when she's just kind of um, messing around with the lettering forms and trying to see what makes sense and what doesn't. So there you have it. Yeah, oh, and I do like um, like you can out like you can output the final art here too, you like can, which yeah. is um, so it can be a starting point and it can also be a finish. I I go back and forth between because you know you can open file, you can open Photoshop files here, um, and like work back in the layers and then send it back to the desktop. I do a lot of that, um, going back and forth too. It is very rewarding when you're working like on your iPad in fresco and then you're like i gotta go to the desktop and you do it and then you just switch it right back it just feels like it really feels like we are in a modern era <laughs> when i yeah can just i'm like go between because none of this stuff was like around when i was in college and i was there like using the pen tool on my trackpad on my little mac uh laptop yeah. um and like trying to paint and photo like couldn't afford any kind of um uh like I didn't have a tablet or anything that I could paint so I was like painting with like my uh you know target mouse I bought for five dollars <laughs> like, yes yes um, things have definitely uh evolved since then including the software like the hardware obviously but also the software and it's really cool to see how you can just like adapt so quickly because you know I'm sure you've been using Adobe products for a long time but every time there's like a new method to go about doing something i'm sure you're like oh this is a even faster way to get that done now <laughs> yeah um all i feel like everything i do i'm always just like i know there's like a faster like i love finding faster ways to do the things that i do every day um and uh yeah but like it's, it's you always rely evolving on your tried and true ones too yeah, I will say there are some things that I'm, I do. And I'm like, I know there's a faster way to do this, <laughs> but I'm just going to keep doing things like the way. long way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that happens to everyone. We all like kind of get into our habits and even with our workflows. And sometimes that's just where you feel comfortable. You want to create in that like comfort zone. Yeah. Right? I like my, my routine that <laughs> I have. Exactly. Can I ask what brush this is? Because I feel like it looks different than the previous one. Yeah. Maybe I'm going so crazy. This is the soft pastel, which I feel like I wanted to grab a brush that like has some texture to it. Like even even for final, like I don't when you're doing hand lettering, especially for like a romance book cover, I don't feel like if it's too clean it feels cold, which I think yes. is fine for the word grumpy, but for sunshine, I was like, let's get something you know lighter. Oops. Um yes that has like some more like emotion a little quirky or like something to it so i grabbed this brush um because I, I like the like rough edges and i feel like i can have fun with this one kind of building yeah it has a little bit letters. of character yeah um 
So like, just like, it's like all those like details, which are things I'm like, do, do the readers care? What, Cause I'm like, let me put this emotion into this title. <laughs> they type. don't know it, but they, they don't maybe recognize it in a definitive way, but I think that you can sense it. Yeah. Even at, just like as a user, you know, like this helped, this helped you buy this book. <laughs> yeah. You don't know it, but this, you gravitated towards this book. Um, yeah. So I just did like a quick kind of just went over it and I, now I'm going to I'm going to make some of these areas like thicker um more like the downstrokes on some of these letters just to get like some variation so it feels different than um because like grumpy model. we did all one yeah. weight so yes yeah I feel like when I um uh, learned that the down kind of adding some weight to the downstroke makes it look so much more like elegant and hand done. When I learned that I was like mind blown. And so I love Same. seeing someone do this. <laughs> I, I guess I just never thought about it before. I was just like, people just are really good at doing this. And then when I realized that the key was to kind of add weight to the downstrokes, like, oh, everything makes so much sense and looks so like naturally beautiful. Yeah, um, I remember like that was like something I learned like when I started getting into lettering. Um, yes. I was like, that's like the thing that everything hinges on with mm -hmm. hand lettering. Um, yeah. So when I learned that. <laughs> yeah, if you're new to hand lettering, if you're being inspired by by what Casey's creating right now, try try some of that. Try some adding some weight to the downstrokes of letters to to kind of make it look a little bit more. I feel like the only word I can think of is elegant, but also it's like natural. It's the natural rhythm of writing. Yeah. Um, just like, it's that thing that makes it, you know, like feel different than like using a typeface. Um, right. Where it's all e like e more even, cleaner. Cause even like I try, I'm like, let's get the same like amount of thickness on all of these. And I never do it and it's fine. It's still like, it still looks good. Like I like having like those, those character pieces yes, to it. That's what, again, that's what differentiates it from using like a scripted font or type like that. Exactly. So like, I like, I think this is yeah, cute. So while you keep connect. working on that, do you have any tips for someone who is kind of new to lettering? Um, what kind of uh, maybe tips for what they should practice or any resources or anything like that? That was a question from Mervin who's looking into improving their lettering. Um, so I always tell people if you like can invest in an iPad, like say, I know like they're so expensive, but it's the best piece of equipment <laughs> that I have. And I, I use it in everything. And it just makes it so easy to like on the go, like do practice things. Yeah. But if not, I actually, uh, before I, cause I had to save up, you know, after I like went out to New York and got my um, first job, like it took me a really long time to save up to get my first iPad. Um, but something get like a, a pack of crayons markers because you can you can do thin and thick strokes with them and it's something really good to practice um doing that with that you know feels better than just like like a pencil and paper and like filling things in um, yeah. like getting a feel for like that kind of brush stroke but with a marker um i i did that because there are a lot of expensive brush markers but like if you just google like what you can do with like a crayola pack of markers like it's it's insane um, yeah, I feel so like that's a good starting, tool to practice with. <laughs> starting with the traditional materials then will make your digital experience a lot more seamless. Like you can go from the the skills and the kind of hand motions that you learn will translate to digital. Yeah, exactly. Despite it being a different medium entirely. You can do it. You guys can do it in the in the chat. Don't be discouraged. Go ahead and try it out. I feel like there's templates out there. There's, um, I'm sure, more Adobe live streams you can watch to help you learn how to hand letter. And, you know, with a little bit of practice, you'll improve more than you think. Exactly. Like, it's, I feel like everyone, you know, who, um, like, you, like, you see so many people online doing so many cool things. But, like, if you scroll back, some people leave up their Instagram from, like, day one. And, like, you can literally see their work transform over the years, um, yes. which, like, I love, do I love doing that for the um, creators that leave that kind of progress up. Because um, I know some people are like, this will never Delete. see the light of day again. <laughs> but... 
Um, yeah, it's yeah. true. Everyone, everyone has a starting point. So in, in any area of work, like, you know, Casey started designing years ago. I'm sure that maybe there's book covers that you, you know, aren't as proud of as the ones you've created now. I feel that way about my art, you know, five-year-old art is not as good as, you know, last week's. So everyone starts somewhere and with practice, you can improve and watching tutorials. I'm obsessed with tutorials. That's why I'm here. Um, okay. So right now you are still kind of carving out or no, not the, the opposite of carving out, carving in. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just, adding uh, like just some like brushy strokes like to the edges because I don't I don't want them to be like too perfect got um, it because that brush itself is pretty crisp on the edges yeah so if you just do like kind of light strokes here and there like you can get some cool texture which is what Ooh. I want here that's a neat technique I've never seen that you know do you just like try things um <laughs> yeah no it's cool it's like uh a different way to use that brush to get a slightly different effect yeah i uh i think it's, it's looking, looking cool. good it's, looking... it's definitely looking hand drawn hand lettered warm like it, it i think using that technique that you were just doing makes it look even a little less digital too yeah right that's the like that's the like you never want things to just like look um like just so like photoshopped clean well I mean you do sometimes but yeah. um <laughs> in this case that is not what um what we want and I so I feel good with that and I know we want to get um to uh we're, we're going to also do like the full I'm going to do like a full kind of jacket design for mm -hmm. you guys but so I'm just really quick going to I'm going to move on to the spine so I'm going to duplicate these um layers okay so the so with the word grumpy I'm like I actually like that feels it's pretty good it's pretty nice um I actually feel like I might, I might just f adjust this one in Photoshop. That Y, like Got I it. can just, I do something like I might, I might just like squish the Y, um, mm -hmm. the R, um, I might just like mask off so it fits, but I feel good about that one. So it's more <laughs> sunshine is the one that um, will need some more adjustments to fit. Yeah, I'm interested to see like where, what, like the goal here is to get all the letters as legible as possible, but also taking up a maximum amount of space. Exactly. Okay. So I am going to do some redrawing here. So I'm going to okay. take, I'm going to get this S and I'm just going to, I'm just going to resize it and I'll make it like a little bit thicker. It can be that simple, guys. So you're just adjusting that, and then after you get all of the um, all of the letters in the right place, you're gonna redraw it so they all look a little bit more cohesive. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm gonna get rid of um, down here where the N and the S connect. I'm probably going to mm. adjust that, but I'm right, going you don't to have as much of that um, space. Yeah. And then okay. this we can shift a little bit love seeing all of this come together you guys remember everyone in the chat go ahead and drop your questions for casey so while she's working i can go ahead and ask her them we can get your questions about book design about publishing about hand lettering answered while we're here and using adobe fresco right now um, i think we'll be moving on to another program shortly but until then, we're in Adobe Fresco. You can ask her all your Fresco questions and we'll get them answered. So you don't have to go to sleep without an answer. You can get them answered right here, right now. And another little reminder, if you're tuning in from YouTube, please join us over on behance.net slash Adobe Live. On Behance, we can chat, we can answer your questions. It's a much more interactive experience. You can join the community on the chat. So pop on over to behance.net slash adobe live and join us so you know 
you you're in you're in the mix you're not just watching from the sidelines um okay so it looks like you've readjusted a lot of uh you readjusted the n the s what are are you making any other adjustments to the letters so I feel good for now. Some things are, I'm going to, I feel like it'll be a little bit easier to do some more final adjustments in Photoshop. So I'm just going to leave this. Okay. For so now. you're ready to head over to Photoshop. Okay. Yeah. I'm actually just Gotta going make sure it to saves and all that. Yeah. So we're going to save this and then, um, I'm just going to, I'm going to just export it to my, um, desktop because sometimes i feel like i it's a uh, the, the lag in the savings so i want i don't want anyone to, to have to wait to have to wait yeah but it, it um, will for those who have um adobe creative cloud it will automatically i think it's synced given that there's a little check mark next to it oh yeah it yeah, probably you has want to be safe okay so now um, okay. i'm going to switch over to my desktop let's do it Oh, oh, yes, here we go. So, all right, okay. we're going to start in in design. Okay, cool. What what do we have here? What are we looking at? Because I know everyone in the chat is going to be curious about how this kind of document is set up. So um, we, I use InDesign, uh, it's like an industry standard to do a full um, book jacket, book cover layout. So I already have a jacket set up here with guidelines. Um, I just did like a one inch spine and then we have our front covers, we have flap, we have that turnaround space um, that we had, um, I had in my template to uh, make sure we account for that. So we're just going to start, um, I like to just block off, um, the front cover and okay. the um so i'm going to fill this like red line is the bleed which is like what we have to fill for the printer will like tr trim um the edges off yeah. but sometimes you, you gotta give it a little wiggle room yeah exactly um so i'm just going to do like put the front and back cover I'll do like the spine so I just like to block it in so even like with the guide sometimes it's a little bit easier to see everything when Visually, it's all yeah like different colors so I'm just okay. going to do and I'm doing like pink and yellow because I feel like that because it's um, a good combo okay it's a so good have, romance palette that's true I think. that's true so we have yellow as spine and as what do you call that I'm sure there you have the name the flap in the flaps our, yeah it's just called that okay yep the, the fr Boom. front flap and back flap professional um, i had it all in here you guys so uh front flap back flap spine in yellow and then we have the front cover and the back cover in pink so it's clear for everyone watching the stream how this document is laid out i love seeing the document just like one big <laughs> document i feel like that's exactly how you would send it to the printers so it's like Great. Yeah. So we export like um, PDFs from right. InDesign. So because it, it all has to print together and then they trim it and it gets wrapped around the books. Um, so I'm just going to drop in. Um, so here you can see like where the template, like it line, it, it should line up um, pretty close to uh, my, so like that, that the the, these were our yeah. guidelines. So like, we're good. I'm going to go into this and I'm just going to drop out everything else, but the type. Okay. Um, so you so write was, opening it in Photoshop directly yes. from InDesign. Um, that's why I find the easiest. Cause I will just be editing art back and forth going between yeah. Photoshop and, um, InDesign. So yeah, I feel like when you work from the linked versions, it's so much easier to make sure everything's staying up to date. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I do, I go back and forth a lot. So doing that right click um, and switching is the, it's, the easiest. It's very handy. I love doing that because then when I edit the linked file and if I have it in multiple places, it just it updates, updates everywhere. It across <laughs> the file and I just feel like a design wizard. I'm like, wow, I am so efficient nothing I can't do. Um, it really makes you feel on top of the world. Yes, when you exactly. Those little efficiency moments. Um, so I'm just quickly, I'm labeling the, I'm labeling my layers. With, I'm doing it for you guys. I don't usually do it 
myself. Um, yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> not, um, my files are always perfectly clean and not messy at all. There you um, go. So I'm just turning off all these other layers that we have in here because we'll just keep our background um, layer in the I put the I put the color in in design and, I, and it's easier to update there I feel like than going back and forth um so yeah. I'm just going to save this and then we'll go back to um right. so in the photoshop file now we just have the last yeah. versions of the of the lettering that you did yes. and it's updated seamlessly here in InDesign yeah and so I I do always put the front and the spine in the same file just because it's like it's easier for me but then I have to um it doesn't line up perfectly with what we right. have here so I'm just going to um copy this over and make a make a new box like a that just yeah. has the the spine type in it so we can adjust this and but then it's still the same file for those watching it's just yeah differently so I'm going to do some resizing a bit to fit in here. And then you see like there's okay. there's even some guidelines in the spine said, where yeah. um, like we try we try to have some safety, but mm -hmm. um, there's a question in the chat about that um, outer line, the blue one. Not the bleed, but the one beyond it. What is that? Um. Oh, that's just a, so I, I have this text up here that says, mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I use a plugin for, um, jackets, but it, it puts the size up here. So, you know, like how big the spine is and what the trim size is. So there's just an extra blue line to, um, go, go around that type to make sure if you like print it, it's included. And like, I think it's the slug maybe, is that what it's yeah. called? But, and I do the, um, shortcut w hides everything so you can see the trim size of the jacket um so right. i like to do that a lot to see how things are looking just to you know a quick look at the final product it's it's um, a lot easier to like look at it visually and judge it without the distractions of the guides that you use while you're actually designing exactly so i told you guys that we're just going to call this bookish tropes um so i do I centered it, I typed it, I centered it. Um, I'm going to use, I feel like this font. I like. Th I think this font will look good with our lettering we have I here. find it so neat to see how people pair like hand lettering with type like and fonts and stuff like that. So I'm curious, um, do you have some favorite uh, fonts that you like to pair with uh, hand lettered pieces? So um, I really like, like I like, like serif fonts um I love I like I really only use like I'm, I'm sorry sans serif fonts I really only use serif fonts on like fantasy books or like okay. something like historical fiction um so like this one like I really like the, the r's like kind of feel like the swoopy r in grumpy um so I, I like when like the legs of letters do that so that's why this one um it just feels like very like rom commy to me and I'm just gonna make it bigger and this is a romance novel for those just <laughs> tuning in <laughs> and then I always tell people like you should never type something and then just like leave it um th it's actually like I tell people who are trying to de design book covers and they say it doesn't feel like a book cover and it's always the author name if you just like track it out to a hundred like it automatically just like mm. feels like more more book like so I'm even going to make it like bigger. Like this is like a New York Times bestseller author name. Like we do it big and kind of fill up the, the bottom space here. Yes. Um, Ooh, I love that little tip. I mean, it was such a subtle tip here to adjust the tracking, but I think uh, that's a huge tip for the chat here. If you're working on a book cover yourself or working on um, like a, a personal project, that's a really good pro tip to make sure it it has that book vibe. The real yeah authentic New York Times bestseller vibe. Um, yes. So 
I'm going to, uh, so I did pre-draw characters um, and I did some, so I have a stock reference in here. I just Got like it. went through Adobe stock and I pulled, um, I kind of like, you can see, I kind of like just put a couple images together, but I found like this like business looking woman who like maybe could be the grump and this um, happy gentleman who bakes cookies. Who bakes cookies, I, which is so yeah. lovely and goes perfectly and with sunshine i use like the bottom half of like this guy i like his sneakers and his pants um yeah. but then we so we didn't have the rest of this guy as well so i'll like do stuff like that for reference oh cool um, cool yeah you're kind uh, of creating this like frankenstein reference yeah to create your own character and so I have, um, so I have the the characters illustrated. So I'm just going to drag. I'm a drag and drop kind of person. So we're gonna want them like kind. I did. I drew them large, but we're gonna want them like kind of tiny. Um, Got it. So we had planned out that. See, we might need to make the. I'm gonna make this background like a bit of a lighter pink because her shoes are bright pink. So we want to be able to see her shoes, and. I'm going to do kind of the same thing. They're in the same file. Um, so I'm just going to copy this and um, move it over. Move it over so we can we can get our sunshine. But so they're a little bit, I think, too. Maybe we can move this up a little. Move that up a little and we can move her. I might need to make the characters a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. Um, unless like he can kind of like maybe he can overlap type could be on top of the text just a touch that could work like i love seeing how like we go from stick figures to you concepted what these characters would look like now we're working with illustrated versions of them and just like making it all come together that vision that you had in adobe fresco just is quickly coming together here in indesign Yes. And so I'm I want to add some color to the type because I don't okay. think that black feels like a romance color. It doesn't um, scream lovey dovey. <laughs> I think you're right. So I'm going to um I always do this like lock transparency. This is how I um recolor things. Oh, I have so this is a cool tip that I saw someone on Instagram post um that if you do let me see okay so if you do command shift y when you're in the color picker if you're somebody who command works in print y. okay if you work in print design it's very easy to pick all the bright colors in the color picker when you're in rgb that will not translate <laughs> to yes. cmyk so if you do that in your color picker it'll kind of gray out the areas that of color that will won't translate to oh, cool um, so it'll limit you to what's actually cmyk yeah, so I like to do, I like just learned that it's like you learn something new all the time. Um, I was just scrolling on Instagram. I saw a designer who is also an, another book cover designer posted it. So I've been doing that recently, but That's I feel cool. like, yeah, because it totally blocks you from picking those bright RGB colors. Yeah. So I always pick, I always do the, the background color. So the, the back square. And then if you just hit um, command delete, it'll fill whatever you have the transparency lock on. So I find that's easier than doing like a color overlay or like coloring. Like I just, that that's my workflow that mm -hmm. I think is a little bit easier. And then maybe we'll do like a yellow or something. Yeah. You or still maybe... picked a dark color for the grumpy naturally. Yeah. Or maybe like a dark pink. We did kind of a light pink. We'll we'll yeah. get this is where we'll go back and forth where I'm like, mm, I don't like that color and I'll just keep changing things. But maybe like a darker pink on um, oh see, we gotta turn on this transparency. Okay, so there we okay. go. I'm gonna do it um the same on the ones on the spot. I've never colored stuff like that. I'm I'm gonna <laughs> have to try that Photoshop tool. I usually do a clipping mask, I think. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, just, so, uh, yeah. A lot of people do that. It, yeah. I feel like everyone, or like some people, do the effect layer with like a color overlay. Um, I feel like there's just there's so many there's ways a lot to of ways do to it. accomplish the same thing depending on what you like. So what you like to work in. So if you're comfortable doing it this way, why change it? It's the same effect. Okay. Okay. I actually think that looks nice. Because mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure it's it's readable and um, on our pink background. So I'm actually just going to pick up this like dark blue 
color for okay for the tag yep. yeah i think looks good and okay so i have like a couple other um pieces that i i pre i pre-did some art for the back cover that i think will look cute i'm going on like the uh, like a cupcake theme like he bakes cupcakes and she's a grumpy businesswoman that like stops by the bakery she, like, all the time <laughs> She's like, I don't know if I should eat all these cupcakes. And he's like, you should. You definitely should. It'll bring joy to your life. Yeah. This is like how he like slowly wins her wins over. Her over. Okay. So I thought it'd be like cute to do like a little pan of cupcakes because I'm going to put quotes on this back cover. So you know, I thought. I was going to ask you what elements are kind of. Uh, what elements do you need in like a traditional book cover? Maybe romance category yeah. since I know that you have very you know, specific knowledge sometimes. Um, so like, it's like all, all the elements, like actually, if you pick up like any book, a lot of them have on the spine, there'll be the author name, the title, and then the imprint of the publisher that uh, published the book, mm -hmm. um, usually at the bottom. And then on the, the front flap, you'll usually have like maybe a spot piece of art and then um, like the summary copy will be there and then the back flap is usually reserved for like author photo author bio um like the art credit art and design credits go there um the well also sometimes like we'll have like what imprint like written out there too um back covers a lot of times especially for jackets since you put the summary on the you have the flap you have the real estate yeah. to put that on the flap yeah. so then a lot of times they'll put praise or blurbs on the back mm -hmm. cover so um I'm going you to have I'll space for that. like six blurbs here. If you're yeah, gonna, that's if I'm envisioning your vision correctly. So I'm actually going to. You also have to put the barcode. So I think I'm going to like I could put a barcode down here, but like I don't know. I kind of think covering up one of the cupcakes might look nice. And I, I say all these elements because I think like uh, if I want to make a spec book cover, um, having all these elements really elevates you from just like you know book cup like front cover spec to like the full spec of the whole like wraparound on the book is like next level yeah so like that's why I, like when people don't like, like know where to start i'm like just go to a bookstore like books you have around the house like look at everything that's on them and like recreate that because it's a elements. real book so if you add all those elements then like you should be you should be set mm -hmm. so i just grabbed i grabbed the barcode off of adobe stock and it just has like zero one two three four five like just a bunch of numbers on it so um it that looks looks official it so, looks legit you guys um we we put that in there i'm going to i'm going to copy this bookish tropes um okay type so we can use it kind of like an author name i'm just gonna make it smaller and close up the letting um and then this you also you like rotate on the side and you always want um everything on the spine should so say you have the book laying flat and the front cover is mm -hmm. face up you should be able to read what's on the spine like at that level so because some people flip it around that's like the easy way to tell which yeah. way the type um should read any elements that you put on the spine oh that's so interesting you guys i feel like i'm learning so much it's like I would have naturally thought that maybe putting it horizontally would just, I don't know, I guess just because everything else is horizontal, you just think about my mind yeah. just goes there. But you're so right. Every book that I have on my bookshelf is definitely like that. Yeah. Sometimes if the words are shorter, if you like a short name, um, like or or a really thick spine on like some like those really big fantasy books. Yeah. Um, then even like titles too, sometimes you can do them um horizontal but most of the time just for the sake of the, the space that Legibility, you have yeah. um everything tends to get flipped and then so we don't have an an imprint because mm -hmm. this is a fake book that I made up so I just did like a cute I did some like cute little cupcakes so cute. we can just use like a spot piece of art like where um where like a logo would be Mm -hmm. um we can just put like a cute little cupcake here i think would look i good. love that filling up the space and using up the artwork and staying on theme it's it's lovely to see 
yeah and th- like these are the things i like about book covers like all these like tiny details that like tie together and just like yeah. make it look more finished um so we can we can scoot this up a little yes bit, becca but... becca in the chat says would also be cute to make the cupcake sheet into a repeat pattern yeah because i know in the um what you i'm sure you have the perfect name what is the name of that pattern that goes on the um the end papers right now yes yeah no that's um and like a lot of like special editions have them too i've i've i haven't gotten to do them on a lot of books because it's expensive to do an end paper um but yeah like elements where you can like repeat anything like a pattern always looks so good on an end paper and just like makes the whole book have like a really nice like full package like i love details like that yeah good good idea becca good idea this she yeah becca is on on the right track um with she's got the... that book design mentality <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> um i'm just we have a little gap here i'm going to good eye. that's the other thing i like zoom in like sometimes you can't see yeah where, show us because we can't um, see um oh things, i see that little white got it yeah those are the things that, you know, a production person kicks back to me and they're like, there's this small white gap you need to fill. <laughs> so like, oh, I, I always try to make sure I have the time to like go over everything like so carefully to make yeah. sure that we have all of the space filled. Um, and then, okay, so I think we're, we can style some blurbs now. So I did ask my my book talk friends um, who love, um, like, love romance books, love the grumpy sunshine trope to give me, like, their, like give me some blurbs. Um, and yes. I just I just grabbed all of their, their handles, too. So we're not going to put, like, yes. author of whatever book. I'm just going to, I'll put their handle. But I did grab some of these that... Uh, like and the people are being so, so funny cool. with them too. That's so cool. That's a really good way to get people involved. Yeah, I feel like book talk is it's something that I'm still trying to get like my FYP to bring to me. I guess I just like so now whenever I see like book related TikToks, I'm like, I don't even know if I necessarily watch it as much as I'm like heart, just so you can like <laughs> Bring me, so, bring me more. That's trying to like train your algorithm train your, to the things algo. you want it to yes. bring you. Um, but yeah, yeah we, once again, guys, if you if you don't follow Casey on TikTok, you totally should. She's got she's made like a really cool community of book lovers on her TikTok, and she shares a lot about book design and lettering and art, specifically in relation to publishing. So go check it out. Yeah, um, definitely come come find me there. I it's the book talk community is like so great. I was on Instagram for the longest time. Yes, book Instagram. I remember this. I uh, I didn't like get on TikTok yet because so I'm a millennial and I was like, am I? I had that moment of am I too old to be on this app? (laughs) (laughs) But I do think TikTok's one of the. It's like for everybody. I feel like it it Um, really is. It's the same as like any other platform. You can find a community. Yes. So that's been, um, during the pandemic, that's been a nice light. Um, all, all of my book friends there that we can talk about, um, our favorite grumpy sunshine romance books or, um, so when we're doing blurbs, a lot of times, like the sentence that the, they say, like it, nobody really cares, but like, if you make the name really big, that's what people like know the, the other author's name. So I always try to make it it, like bolder or a little bit bigger. Um, so that's what I did here, but like, we also don't want it. I did like pink on pink, like a tone on tone so that it's not like, we still have the title shining. It's not competing for for your eye. So, and then I think we can do, I, 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 people sent me a lot of blurbs so we can do another one. I love Um, that you mentioned that about like the blurb that it's really about the name. Cause I feel like it's, it's just there to kind of give the book maybe a little bit more credibility to those who aren't familiar with the writer or this, like if it's a series of books or whatever, and you're so right. It's like, I mean, you read it, but you want to see who else is endorsing this book. Yeah. Um, and then, so like, also it's like the author name and then it'll be like New York times bestselling author of, and you'll, you'll put their book title too. So like having the title and the author name there, if like somebody, if a consumer comes to that book and they've like read something by that author or read that book that's mentioned in the blurb, um, I think that's the idea there that, um, that will help them, um, make that connection and like want to read this book. 
So it's true. It's all psychological. Yeah. But I love this one. This book reminds me why I love love. So I think that uh, that's a that's front cover worthy too. That is totally front cover worthy. I love that. I love that everyone got really excited to create these like, you know, fake blurbs just to, Yeah, people just are to really into it. Book. I was like, thank you guys. Thank you. That's lovely. Why don't you guys uh in the chat leave us Leave us your fake book reviews for <laughs> blurbs for this book here. Um, I just want to see if you want to get creative with a little blurb, what you guys would say. Uh, hand it over while we're while we're working here. Yes. Um, <laughs> Correctly up. Um, it's a fun, uh, creative thing. <laughs> definitely. It's so, so, so creative. So let me see here. How much time does it typically take for you to design to design a book cover, do you think? I mean, I feel like that's going to be a hard question because uh, um, not yeah. two hours. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I went. To, most of it is the um, just with anything, and, and like it's not even just book covers. Like anything where you're doing creative work for corporations like you have there's so many approvals um but I feel like that's what takes the longest so right. um we and we work um and like different like countries and their publishing programs like work differently too and definitely like the um like the supply chain and the printer situation too in the last two years have changed um the schedules of books a little bit <laughs> but um so usually like it's like a year of like a year out or more is usually um how long we're working on these and so I work in and we work usually like a lot of publishers do seasons so where I work it's three there's a spring summer and fall so it's like while you're working on front cover concepts and hiring artists and like art directing them um that's like one season but the season before that the covers are already approved so then you're doing like sales materials like um a, a lot, like advanced readers copies that go out for reviewers early yeah. on like we do that kind of stuff and just doing like the full jacket design like working on that and then like the the last season is kind of in the um like the pre-press stuff like getting proofs with color checking all of that stuff um like pre-flighting everything to make sure it's all right and sending the files to our production team that gets it to the printer so you have um, like multiple books at different stages yeah which is nice because it's like not the same thing every day right. um and if i want to take a break if i have no if i'm head empty no thoughts on ideas i can just go work on like what we're doing now a jacket mechanical um and it's kind of like a more technical thing um but it's and nobody's like approving it really like i can have fun with it so it. i'll like switch it up and do that sometimes so interesting yeah i bet that at every stage like colors characters illustrations hand lettering elements there's like uh, approvals right and like yeah people decide it's like the author in. has to see it and they have to get on board and then you know our marketing team is like can we make a campaign out of this and like that's it too like once the front cover is done I have to make sure they have everything to start doing all of their assets for the campaign they're planning um and then like sales needs it too to start selling into different accounts so it's like everybody else's job like relies on um book like cover yeah <laughs> So um, it's the, it's like where everything starts. So I'm like, actually, I read the, I do read the manuscripts, but I'm like, I feel like the third person at the publisher to read the book. So it's always like mm. the editor, like get, editor buys it from, yeah. uh, so at that point, like author and their beta readers and like their agent have read it. Mm -hmm. And then the editor, maybe like someone else on the editorial team just to like get another read on it. And then it goes to design. So like we, cause we start the covers before everyone else starts there. Yeah, stuff. cause you're working on the cover like a year before the book is, I mean, it's finished maybe depending on the type of book I assume, but yeah. before it's out too, right? Yeah. Um, so like usually like what well, it'll be like a first draft at least. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes more, sometimes it's an excerpt if it's exactly, like something super rushed. Um, so yeah, it's like, it kind of depends. There's always like a different stage i did early early on just pull out like a y for like a drop cap and we okay. can do um a let's like let's make it pink yeah i'm um, down always but we can do oh good i have this pink color in here still 
my oh, right. perfect the perfect pink that matches and then it updates we love that <laughs> love it. i love that i really do it's like the the, the corniest thing but I, I, it's satisfying to me yeah okay so, so now what what's going on this flap so this is where a summary would go. However, I'm not a copywriter. Otherwise I would have like made up some description for this, but um, for the sake of this, we're just gonna go up to, you go up to the type menu and you're ever just like, you wanna get like text on the page that you can style if like copy is to come later, which like does happen sometimes I'm waiting yeah. on like it, the editor to get it together, the author to approve it. But I wanna start designing. So I'll just fill with placeholder text. So we have um, beautiful nonsense. Yes, exactly. But so we're going to do usually, so when we style, um, like we always wanted to be justified um, with the last line aligned left. So I did that. And then I want to make sure that it's not taking up too much of the flap. So it's still okay. like readable. And there's like a, a guide here on the center. So like, I think that looks good. I'm going to, I'm going to do some text wrap to make this. I, I don't ever do it to, so I don't apply text wrap to the art. I always draw another box because sometimes it's like hard to get it to like line up the way that you want it. So I'm just going to do a, a little more control. Yeah. So I'm going to do this one and you see like there's a, there's that huge gap Mm -hmm. underneath so like if you just like pull this up a little bit like so i like to play around with this to try and get things like as close as like right. looking the way i want it to look yeah yeah sometimes the with certain tools it's like the more manual you do it the the quicker you can get like your vision down yeah and then like you don't have to worry about like cutting uh, like cropping off any of the arts accidentally so I like to just do this and then we're going to, let's change this font and make it cuter. Cuter um, because romance. Yes, exactly. So That's that looks a little cute. bit too big. So we're gonna make it smaller and then we're also going to just like give it some breathing room between. Yeah, what are lines. like kind of the, um, the font sizes that you recommend for this kind of uh, text? So, um, like I usually, I feel like around 10, 11 is good. If you go up like, like 12, 13 feels more middle grade. Mm -hmm. Um, so you want to feel like age, like older people can read tinier text, like is what it, it like in, in my mind um, to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> works. And so usually if I had just like real copy with, there's like all these hyphens too, I would go mm -hmm. in and fix like all these bad breaks yeah um but i for the sake of this i'm just going to do um because it is placeholder text yeah i'm just gonna go to the paragraphs panel and we're gonna like turn off hyphenate okay so that you get you get like some bigger rivers in here but like i would go through like manually with like actual copy and um like cut like like hyphenate words at the end of lines that like make sense i would like kern some things like i would play with like resizing this box to make things like look as A nice more, as possible yeah, yeah. um but Fine for the for the sake it. of this um i think it's fine and we can make this we can make this pink i always i'm always down to to make it pink and then i'm like and then I, so I like to get pronounced because sometimes it's, it's like, does it read? Um, yeah. It's like a little bit too, should I get like a thicker weight? Thicker weight, yeah. Yeah, that feels a little bit better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think something that's like shocking too is like, if you are used to designing digitally, sometimes designing for print, you don't realize like how little you can actually just make things because it's going to be printed out yeah <laughs> it has like a different effect when you print stuff out so like if you're not used to designing at 10 or 11 font uh height it's totally it's, natural once you when it when it, once it comes down to print like it, it reads totally normal <laughs> yeah um yeah and which like it's that's it's so helpful like we order um like proofs to check all the color which like i'm kind of working right now like we're half in cmyk and the art is all like all in rgb like i yeah. we like we always wait to change that stuff at the end because most artists work 
in RGB. Like a lot of them are on their their iPads or they're in Photoshop. Um, so we like and we have like ways. Like we have a team that helps us make sure that the colors match like the profiles our printers use, and like I can order printouts to come to my house to make sure that like all the color is looking. Oh, that's good. so handy. Yeah, um, because every printer is different. Every yeah, every screen is different. It starts to get really complicated. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I usually like when I'm just like designing, I'm, um, I'm not super worried about that because I'll change it all at the end and just focus on color. Um, so we're kind of like half in, in each right now, but mm-hmm. I, I think it's fine for the time being. I agree. I agree. We have a question here from Mervin again. Do you read the entire manuscript to get an idea on how to design the cover or do you get the idea by reading a summarized version if available? Um, so I, I do like to read the whole manuscript because a lot of times, like, so maybe I'll, I'll see something that the editor or the author didn't visualize while, while they were reading or writing it. Um, so I, I do like to read the whole thing, but I also have the editor. I work very closely with editors and they're super helpful with, um, providing like all the, the big necessary information. So they kind of give me like a creative brief, um, that has, you know, like books that this will compete with. Um, like what the genre is, what the char- like character descriptions, which is really nice. Um, so I can just copy and paste that and send to an illustrator to make sure they get right. Um, but like I do, I do like to get my own feel for the story, and I'm just like genuinely like I love reading, and I love and I love like the books I get to work on. So I'm all I'm usually just like I want to read the book to read the book too. Um, so I always make sure I read everything. Yes, that's a really good. Um... <laughs> Yeah, to be passionate about creating book covers is naturally going to lead you to being passionate about reading the books that you're then designing. So that's a really good natural hack there, right? Like yeah. just genuine genuine curiosity to to be invested in the projects before you get started designing them. Yeah, it helps to, um, you know, like it's a job, but a job that I really enjoy. So I like, I think that's part of it too. Definitely. That always helps. Um, I had a question when we were talking about working ahead of time on books, like you're working a year out or something on a book. Do you struggle waiting to reveal the cover, like to reveal what you're working on? Um, Because you can't really share it, I'm assuming, until it's out or something like that. So how do you kind of work within that? Because you do share a lot on social media and a lot on TikTok. So I just wonder like how you find that balance. Um, yeah, you know, I I definitely, like, when I was newer to it, I was, like, so much more eager, but I'm kind of in the the phase now where there's, like, always something new that's, like, about to be revealed because I I have, like, years of of books behind me, but, so, like, I can never share anything until, like, the cover reveal happens, so if, whether it's, like, a media outlet reveals it, or a lot of times authors just reveal covers themselves to, um, like, whatever social media platform they have the biggest like following on they'll like tease a cover um and then they'll they'll sh- share it there so I usually like I wait like I'll, I'll like repost what authors post or like the um like the media reveal but I'll I'll like wait a little bit and then like I'll share some like I'll, I'll share the covers like I'll share some like behind the scenes things like the closer we get like and I always try to post like around the on sale date too because if if people are seeing like interesting content connected to a book um, like, and it's on sale, like maybe they're more likely to pre-order it or like go, go out and buy it. So I try to do that as well. Um, and sometimes it is hard to wait. There's some that I'm like really excited about right yeah, now I bet. that I know like won't get revealed for a couple months or like a year, but, um, there's all get the guys, there's always exciting things coming. <laughs> That's true. I guess once you've, uh, had books that already, were revealed and you're working on the next, you kind of always have the next book like right on the horizon. (laughs) But I I assume, I guess in the beginning when you don't have any books out yet and you're working on them and you have to wait a year to to be able to, you know, share that amazing work that you did. It must be like antsy. You must feel antsy, but. Oh my gosh. Yeah. When I was like, yeah, like my first, after like the first like full like list of books I designed, I was definitely like an eager little designer, like excited for people to see, like, or even just like, it's so exciting to like hold something in real life that you've stared at on a screen for like months and months and months. (laughs) 
Um, yeah, but it's, it's like very rewarding work. And like, I love seeing like unboxing videos, like the authors post when they get to see, cause like the, some of them have been writing these books, you know, for years yeah. and it's a, such a privilege to get to, to work with such awesome creators and get to like create a piece of art that represents their art and like right. even like work with other. Life. Yeah. So it's like, it's very rewarding to see, especially if like an author like really loves their cover and like, I feel like I did my job and like to yeah. see them like get to like to see their art like represented in like, that's just, it's the best feeling. How rewarding, how dreamy, what an exciting like collaborative effort right with like the writer and also the editor and everyone who becomes like a stakeholder for for each book it's definitely like you are that touch point right like the first touch point that people have before they actually read it yeah it's 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 really cool I love what I do and I always like encourage like it is really fun you know there everything has its ups and downs but um it's it's such a fun job um I wouldn't I don't I I don't know what else I would be doing (laughs) (laughs) well that's good that's a good place to be so what are you uh creating right now is it just like a title for for all the blurbs that you're gonna drop in yeah so I was like a sweet praise for grumpy sunshine like something that kind of you know like we try to make the copy match like the theme um so I'm doing that and we always want to make sure so I'm just going to uh make this like bulgur make the title italic and then sometimes even though this all sits on the same baseline i like to like i kind of like when they um match like in the center so i'm gonna go to the character menu and i'm just gonna like bump up this Got phrase it. So, like it's like a yeah, tiny bit almost mm-hmm. yeah and it's like one of those like optical things that i just like when it's other type is so short next to it i like i'm i just think it looks nice more balance maybe like if we do maybe we do like the yellow on this pink Ooh, yeah that definitely stands out there's a good enough contrast there yeah so i was browsing on your tiktok right i was scrolling you, you can you, you can answer this while you work and, and all that but i was scrolling through your tiktok and i saw that you mentioned um unused book covers um yeah (laughs) so I'm wondering right because you have the insider info here how many unused book covers do you think one book typically typically has I mean I know I'm sure everything's different right but saying on average so if we say we hired an illustrator sometimes there will be like a completely finished piece of art that we killed and started over um but then there's probably at least like three Mm -hmm. other sketches that um that we didn't go with or other concepts but if I'm doing the art myself or like I'm doing the lettering um I'm doing like kind of like using stock images I will have sometimes like there will be like 50 unused things (laughs) like sitting on my computer and like some are definitely like more painful than others where we kind of have to keep going back like even like we'll do something that everybody loves but then a new book gets revealed that's something that maybe like conceptually is too similar or like and then we'll kind of like rethink on that so like sometimes it's things that are like kind of out of our control um but there's like I always tell people like there is so much unseen work that like and this is true with so many creative jobs um because you only pick like one final one concept to go with one final um like color palette to go with it like a lot of people like all this work you see out in the world that like chances are there's at least a few other versions of it like on the cloud somewhere (laughs) wow i had no idea you guys i am shocked let me know if you are shocked too because i definitely thought it was maybe i don't know five but you're saying 50 that's so much some of the more painful ones yeah Yeah. like you can get (laughs) into the double digits the comfortable double digits (laughs) and we're all um whenever we have like a, co- a colleague on the team that is kind of going through it yeah you know, everyone's very sympathetic we've all been there <laughs> <laughs> right 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 because it yeah I, I could I can see some projects just kind of being spun around for a while and other ones just coincidentally go go a little easier um we have this great question from Jacqueline Lee thank you for your question so when new oh my titles- gosh I love Jacqueline we've worked it- together on a few covers she's a great illustrator Amazing, Jacqueline. Thanks for showing up here and dropping your questions. So 
When new titles come out, what determines which assignments go to which designers? Do you ever get to claim certain ones you'd be interested in working in? It's a really good question. Um, so I'm very fortunate that I have the most amazing manager, um, uh, my art director, Alice Nimpy. She is so great and is like, she always like wants us to have projects that we're passionate about. So we kind of do it every season. We um, we talk to, the, we meet with each editorial team and they, they kind of pitch all their books to us. Um, that they've acquired for the season. So we, we listen, we kind of like take notes of things like we're interested in. Um, and then we'll just like let, we'll let Allison know like things that we're really excited to work on. And the, the cool thing about the team I'm on is like everyone has like kind of like different tastes, like genres that they, they really like to work on or genre. Like I, I, we have one designer who doesn't like to work on any books with murder. I love thriller books. So there's like not, <laughs> it's not like a, it's not like a gauntlet fight for, um, for like, so, well, book, sometimes right. there is like one book that everybody wants to work on but yeah. a lot of times like there's a nice balance of um and sometimes it's like i'm fantasy out like i i can't work on any more <laughs> fantasy books um so we'll like switch there too um so yeah we just kind of we hear everything and then like we just let let our boss know what we're interested in and then she takes care of like assigning and making sure you know like you don't have too many huge expectation titles that have to go to all the meetings um and you get like maybe some like smaller like maybe a debut book that um there's not as much pressure on or something that you can have fun with or like an author that you've already designed three of their books before this so you want to keep working with right. them so like she kind of takes all of that into account um and like distributes the titles to the team <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, there's so many different variables to consider. And yeah, like genres, debut debut novel versus another series that you want to continue working on. There's so many things to weigh on. I'm sure your art director helps you guys all manage that. Yeah, so. she's the best. I like could not ask for a better manager. So interesting. <laughs> um, thank you, Jacqueline, for that question once again. It's super interesting to see how, how these things pan out. Um, yeah. And if you, if anyone else has any other questions, drop them in, we'll be sure to get to them. We have another question here, which from Mervin, uh, what was your biggest weakness when you first started designing and that is now maybe, um, your biggest strength? Ooh, presenting like presenting my ideas and articulating about them was something that I feel like it took me a while to get a hang up because I was always like so nervous yeah. to like I'm like this is what I've spent like all my time in my head over here <laughs> like trying all these things um the you know I just like had to become more confident in the work that I was doing and the decisions that I was making and you know like I have a lot of experience and like I know the market well um, and like kind of trusting myself more and like just building up the presentation skills of like speaking to a room full of people um in a way that's like going to like get them on my side <laughs> about yes, something you want to you want to sell your your passion idea through yeah exactly so i think it was just like it's like getting a, like a couple projects under your belt to uh like build your confidence more um so like that was definitely like that was a struggle at the beginning um, yeah, I feel like that that can go for most industries, you know, like at first, it's really hard to feel confident working in that industry when when you're maybe new to it or just getting started in your career. But with time, you know, hopefully it all pans out and evens out and you gain confidence. Now exactly. you're working here live, showing <laughs> us how you do it all live. Here I would am. argue is <laughs> takes a lot of confidence. Yeah, we're just um, like faking it till we make it. Um no this is and practicing at the same time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes well if anyone else has any other questions go ahead drop them in the chat if if you're watching on youtube please come over to adobe come over to adobe live by going to behance.net slash adobe live then we can see your questions and all that kind of stuff so we can get your questions answered and you can participate in the conversation so come join us um in the meantime I have more questions for you, Casey. Well, first off, tell us where we, we're at because, you know, we've been asking you questions and I want to get back in touch with where we are in the design process. So give us a little update. 
So I am adding some more blurbs here. And a lot of times, this is like the great thing about blurbs. Sometimes like the, the it'll be like two sentences long and we can trim it down to just something that's like a stunning debut. <laughs> Like, right. um, which helps with like, especially if we want it to fit um, some pieces of of art, um, like like we're containing them in these cupcake circles right now. It's nice to like be able to trim some things down. So be I'm selective just, a little bit. Yeah, and I had already like put some of these here, oh, so I'm just it. grabbing different. Ten out of ten recommend books with Sierra. Great blurb. Um, amazing what author wouldn't want that on their book <laughs> exactly. um, so I saw that you um you, like you said a, a second ago that you were into kind of thriller books murder true crime so I'm wondering like I, are you a big true crime podcast fan I I am like any any true crime podcast that's recommended to me um i will try out um i feel like my sister is always like really great with like keeping up with like whatever new thing is yes. happening and she'll like let me know what um like, and you what were to able to, to work on like a, a true crime book right I'm not making yeah <laughs> so um a, a good girl's guide to murder yes. is um it's so good and it's a different trope that i like that's popular in ya thrillers where it's like they solve a crime together um the uh like the couple in that book but um it's just this like awesome this girl is like solving a cold case from her hometown for her like senior project which and, is very like true crime podcast like because yeah, that's what a lot of so, podcasters do so the book ended up like it's it, it did really well the first book and then um so she got to write two more books and like in the second book there's like she, the main character does a podcast about the crime she solved in the first book so it's go. it definitely has like those elements to it <laughs> Um, but yeah, that was one, like when, um, the editors were pitching it, I was like, I must work on this. I'm exactly. like, I want to read this I, book. I wanted so to get much. to it. I was like, wait, <laughs> I can see all of this connecting. I saw that you did some, uh, hand lettered, uh, pieces in your portfolio. I was like looking around and I saw that you did a stay sexy, don't get murdered hand lettering piece, yeah. which, which is, I was like an original fan. Like, yes. I feel like I did those, like it was in 2016. Cause that, so I got my first assistant job. Like, I think the, like the podcast had a couple episodes out, yes. I think. Um, so that was like when I, like some of the first pieces I started like playing with. Um, I love seeing yeah. like passions kind of translate to different stages in your career right so like you did that hand lettering piece you said early on then now you're here designing full-on true crime related books it's like your interests can come into your career and you can channel that in in really cool ways that make you maybe an exceptional designer for that genre because you are in the genre you know you're you're living it you're breathing it so it's really neat when you see that happen you know yeah, no, and like we definitely like that that plays into how um like some of the designers like request books when it's like on a topic that um they know a lot about or they're really excited about or they consume similar content. Um so that's like the cool thing. And it's always like something different. Um like I feel like the books for teens are always like trying to incorporate like whatever new thing is culturally yeah. trending. Um so that uh like it definitely translates to the books that we're designing and we get to do um just like some cool some cool cover designs um because of that I, I love I just love when when it all like comes together and you can turn your passion into part of your career it's just like encouraging for anyone out there who's maybe like designing let's say I don't know in a genre that they don't really care about maybe it's not even books maybe it's just like I don't know. I'm going to say some, I don't, I don't even know. I can't even imagine it because everyone has a passion for different things. But if you're not designing in line with your passions, you know, there's always a way to kind of maneuver your career and tailor it to be something that you're truly passionate. I think Casey's a great example of that. She loves reading even before she was working in it. So naturally, once she became a designer, she went, she gravitated towards publishing and it just makes so much sense. Whoa, major design change just happened. Yeah, shoot. I'm like thinking, I'm like, should we do a more dramatic flap? Like, cause we have so much pink and I'm like, yeah. is it a little too sunshine? And maybe we get more of the grump onto the, 
Th- the these are really here. good questions to ask yourself. <laughs> These are the questions that I spend all day asking. Yeah. Myself. You're like, wait, am I being true to the, to the story? Yeah. So I'm actually, we're going to make this type yellow, yellow. and we'll. Cool. Okay. So while you continue switching things over, I have a question here from Iva Agarwal. She's asking, or they're asking, how did you make the illustrations? They're really nice. So I know that right now we're still working on our book cover design, but if you could talk us through maybe what, maybe what software you used, um, to kind of create those. Um, yeah, so I did, I did them in Adobe Fresco, but it it took me so long, like drawing characters, um, is not my strong suit. So we would have been sitting here all day if, um, I did that live. (laughs) So I just used, um, like I said, here, I can pull up those. Uh, reference photos again. So I just went on Adobe stock and looked for, I was like looking for like a woman with her arms crossed. That's what I searched. Mm-hmm. Cause I was like, what, what makes someone look grumpy? Um, so this was the image that I pulled to reference and I kind of kept like her clothes the same, but I was like, mm-hmm. oh, she can have like pink high heels. So I gave her kind of like a power ponytail. So I do take yes. like and some more creative, modern. yeah, and creative mo- more liberties. Mm-hmm. Um, she even has like, she's a little cute hoop earrings. I gave her pink nails. Um, so yeah, I just kind of like go off the reference and cause I don't really have like, I don't do too many figures. So I don't really have like an illustration style of character. So it's easier to use reference for those. Um, and then for our sunshine character, I grabbed, um, I had to kind of do like a Frankenstein Photoshop together um because he didn't have legs in this picture so i ended up grabbing um this and i wanted him to like wear an apron and be holding a tray and like things like that where i'm trying to do it quickly it's like the i didn't want to have to draw hands you know Mm -hmm. so i was like they can be under the tray uh Mm -hmm. it's like all of those things played into the choices they look really cool and they fit right into the composition just as you imagine so I love, I love seeing it all like make sense and click like that. Yeah. There you have it, Eva. And then these feel a little bit too big. So we're going to, I think I can just make the, the yes, handles. Get the, get the handles big. As you mentioned earlier, that was a key part of it all. I'm going to, I'm going to also make them bold too, but we just have, so usually like this is where we would put the author's bio and their photo, um, but we don't have that, that stuff. So for the sake of this, and so many people gave me all of these awesome blurbs. blurbs. So yes. um, we're just, we'll just add the rest of them here. Beautiful. I love, I love seeing all those inner, like those, uh, participatory blurbs coming into play. It's like so rewarding for everyone. And I was like a little bit nervous. I was like, no one's going to give me any of them. And then, so people also gave, so we're doing a fantasy cover tomorrow and people were like, I will give you blurbs for both. Like people were (laughs) really into it. People were excited. I love that. So I know earlier when we first kicked off the stream, you mentioned like that you're always looking at um, kind of the market and seeing what trends are happening. Where do you get inspiration for book cover designs, um, aside from looking at maybe other books and what's in the market? Um, So I spend a lot of time scrolling on Instagram and Pinterest. Um, Like I'm just forever like in that, those explore, or like going down the rabbit hole where you just keep clicking. Yeah. Things. So I do a lot of that. And the other things that um like we like we're constantly looking at. And I feel like a lot of creatives who are making like products, especially like for teenagers. Um so we like consider like what's the popular music right now? What do the music album covers like on Spotify look like? Or even like now they have those um those little looped videos on different songs, yeah. like looking at that stuff and like whatever Taylor Swift is doing, we're interested. Um <laughs> Or good, uh, like the, uh, the Netflix, like Netflix posters that come out. Like we get a lot of times, like books are comped to Bridgerton or like whatever TV right. show is really cool. So we'll look at like what the, the posters look like mm-hmm. for that and like the typography for like the show name and like what the key art is. Um, so those are just other places that we find inspiration. It's kind of like whatever media your audience is consuming that's books and not books. Um, like that's kind of 
what yeah whatever is like at. culturally relevant and music and movies is like a big part of culture so it makes sense that you would be kind of referencing that whenever whenever you can especially with your target market that's so yeah. neat so lots of things i also have um i did some like sprinkles art that was on my ipad i don't think i saved it here okay so i just got this airdropping it yes yep we love it <laughs> so i i thought like maybe some sprinkles could, could be, be a nice little element yeah little, going in yeah. with the, the cupcake bakery theme i agree so, with you and i just used actually so what i, I did they're simple easy just like yes. little strokes to um yeah. make so while she's working on that, everyone in the chat, why don't you go ahead and let us know if you if you read romance novels, go ahead and drop a little heart in the chat if you are a romance novel reader so we can uh, just get a little loose track of what's what's cool in terms of books because I am a TV aficionado. So sometimes with books, I get a little lost, but I love reading them when they come by me or when someone recommends them to me. They're such fun reads. So I'm just curious what's going on in the chat. Like, did anyone read? Emily Henry has a new book out and she's huge in the romance category. I'm writing it down. Um, I was That's one book, of my questions book for lovers. you. That's one of my <laughs> questions for you was like maybe three books that you would really recommend right now. Ooh, yeah. I definitely recommend Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Um, this is like that question of like, it's I read so change, many things. Yeah. And when people are like, oh, what books do you recommend? I'm like, I've, I've suddenly forgotten every book I've ever <laughs> read. <laughs> well, don't worry. We can come back to it. We also always have tomorrow, you guys. But those sprinkles look really cute. I really and like how they like, turned out. Yeah. And like maybe um, we do some like in the background here. Mm -hmm. Just uh, uh, this is where I get where I'm like that all the empty, all the negative space. We must we fill, get rid of it. <laughs> fill it with something. <laughs> And this is so something like sprinkles, like fits, like we have the cupcakes. Yes. Um, this is like something that could fit nicely. We have like extra space on this flap here. I, I like the effect that it has. So we have um, about just a little heads up case. We have about five minutes left to keep on working. If you wanna continue with the sprinkles or any other elements, but we do have a good question. Again, Mervin, you're coming in with the great questions here. Um, do you have any recommendations for books on lettering? Ooh, I do. <laughs> She's I'm, I'm like turning around to my bookshelf to, <laughs> to see. Actually, yes, because I cannot remember the title of it off the top of my head. And I think it's on the floor or on the lower shelves behind yes. me. So I can't All right, you see guys. it. You have to tune in tomorrow for, for her um, full written out title <laughs> recommendation because she can't reach it, reach it right now. We're, we're streaming. We're working on this book cover. Um, uh, no worries. No worries. It's no trouble at all. So where are we at? What's going on? So you're still working. You're going to decorate, add those decorative elements here with the sprinkles. Yeah. And I'm actually just doing like, I I'm doing a kind of shortcut where I'm not going to go in and edit the sprinkles Ooh. I'm going to like so some of these oh, um, okay You're are like becoming like Ill in illegible but I don't want to so Erase I'm just going them. to put do you, do, you, do you see what I'm doing I see you just like covered <laughs> it up with a square yeah so like something like that is easy if you have a um like a solid color background mm -hmm. um and just like for the the sake of time that we can do that i also mm -hmm. didn't i didn't adjust i'm gonna adjust this r because i didn't do that yet okay i love seeing how the theme of like the cupcakes and the baking and that's like the sunshine is coming through on on this entire um what what did you call it a second ago and now i forgot the name of it and i know that you said it and i wrote it down the name of of um well i guess the entire book cover uh jacket mechanical there you go jacket mechanical that's the word i was it's a technical term <laughs> yes i was trying to bring it back here for everyone but i love seeing how the theme is carried out throughout it it really makes it feel like cohesive and really sells through the concept and i think i really appreciate that you didn't go with like a sunshine like sun theme yeah because you could have <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I, I, we had the detail on the the eye, eye. so I feel like that's enough because we. Mm-hmm. I feel like the content of like whatever book I made up in my mind would be more um, like bakery. So I think yes. leaning into the cupcakes and then something like that also gives like the editorial team. My Photoshop doesn't want to work. <laughs> gives the no worry, editorial no team <laughs> something to go off of, um, like with the copy, where they can play up the like words like sweet, it's the cooler um, concept. Yeah, yeah, there's more legs to it. Because I feel like something sure. like sunshine, like you never want it to feel like too young, especially if it's like an adult romance book. You don't want to be like too cheesy. Like you can get cheesy on like middle grade and picture books, um, but not not so much um, with the adults. Yeah. That's really, really good to keep in mind. You hadn't even thought about that angle. So Casey, we have to start wrapping up for the day in, in a little bit, but can you give us a little overview of what we accomplished today? I feel like we covered so much and what can, what we can expect for tomorrow. So yes, today we did kind of start to finish concept sketching, um, the, the lovely title type for this. And then just like laying out a full jacket design, front cover design with different elements like character illustrations um, and extra typography copy pieces like blurbs and stuff. So like you can see the full kind of package wrap of a book cover and how you can expand whatever's on the front to the rest of the package. Um, So we did romance today and then tomorrow we're going to do enemies to lovers, but like in a fantasy kind of style. Ooh, so tomorrow's genre is totally different and the style that you'll be designing it will will be different too to work with that genre. Yeah. So neat. Okay, so Casey, I can't believe that you took us through this whole thing. This looks legit, super legit. And it makes sense because you're a book cover designer. So I love to see it. I'm so excited about it. Thank you so much for walking us through that. Again, you guys be sure to follow Casey uh, on TikTok, on Instagram. She's sharing a ton of publishing knowledge and design knowledge. So be sure to follow her there and um, we'll see you here tomorrow. But uh, we'll be back tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Pacific for those who uh, weren't here in the beginning. So for part two of designing a custom book cover, now stick around for the creative encores of the Illustrator Creative Challenges with Julia Vaca immediately, followed by how to edit TikToks in Premiere with Camila Santander. Join Camila as she shows you how to create engaging videos that resonate with your audience. So thank you so much for being here today, Casey. This has been incredible. Shout out to everyone in the chat who made this, uh, asked us great questions and made this all possible. So thank you so much, everyone. See you tomorrow. Thank you.